Uh, hello all, uh, welcome to our uh, talk. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, Envoy support on Windows. Uh, my name is Sanjay Bhatia, I'm a software engineer there. Um, previously I've contributed to um, Windows container support in Cloud Foundry application runtime and, and contributed to the Diego container scheduler um, in Cloud Foundry. Um, right now I'm a, a full-time contributor to the Envoy on Windows work. And presenting with me today is David. Hi, everyone. I'm a program manager at Microsoft. I've been a member of the Windows Core networking team for a few years now. Uh, my main areas that I focus on are container networking as well as uh, software-defined networking, uh, particularly in the uh, Kubernetes on Windows space. So what's on the agenda today? Uh, we'll be starting out looking at the motivations behind uh, porting Envoy to Windows, uh, its history of how we got here at our first alpha release, um, what does the alpha release actually mean, how to get started with it, um, you know, showing a demo uh, of Envoy on Windows in action, as well as uh, after the demo, uh, going over future plans roadmap, and uh, you know, how to get involved with the community, and we'll wrap up with a Q&A session after that. So Envoy on Windows, why? Envoy was developed for Linux first, and it works great. Uh, but the reality is that in industry today, many organizations have a mixture of uh, OS platforms in their environments. Uh, essentially, without Envoy on Windows, uh, those are organizations and users are faced with two choices. Use a different proxy across Windows and Linux, or rewrite all Windows uh, applications and migrate them to, link to Linux, both of which are pretty costly and expensive undertakings that take time. Our message today is, if you are using Envoy Proxy for Linux services to solve a particular problem, now you should be able to begin initial prototyping work on deriving those same uh, benefits and utility for Windows-based applications and services as well as infrastructure. So also of note uh, is that the Envoy project was founded with the belief that the network should be transparent to applications. And when network and application problems do occur, it should be easy to determine the source of the problem. So this, uh, you know, porting Envoy to Windows is basically another step in line with uh, the Envoy's project mission of making the network transparent to any application, regardless of language, architecture, or operating system. Being able to reuse and leverage uh, existing investments for Envoy on Linux and transferring that knowledge and training uh, to Envoy for Windows makes the overall system and uh, architecture simpler and easier to manage for organizations. Uh, essentially, you, know, you don't need to train personnel for multiple solutions that are contingent on which operating system you're running for your apps. Uh, also of note is, of course, the rich feature set. So getting Envoy to compile and run natively on Windows is only going to make it possible uh, for the project to deliver value through its uh, rich features to Windows as well. Uh, Envoy is also becoming an industry standard uh, thanks to its extensibility, you know, pluggable architecture with clever concepts, and its usage in service mesh. Uh, support for Envoy on another operating system is only going to strengthen that position further. Uh, so project growth. The growth benefits are twofold, I would say. Uh, not only will, uh, you know, will this effort grow the number of proxies available on the Windows ecosystem, but uh, porting Envoy to another OS is going to lower the barrier to entry for contribution and usage as well, causing the Envoy project itself to grow. So let's take a look at the history and how we got to the alpha stage. Uh, basically, this effort started in July 2017, where there were meetings between VMware and Microsoft to essentially plan and look at what it takes to bring uh, and compile Envoy on Windows. Um, you know, after that, uh, in 2018, Bazel was uh, identified as the unified build system. So it was a little bit of a setback because Envoy uh, or Bazel had issues uh, compiling on Windows. So there were some patches needed to get that working. Uh, this took a little bit of time, but in uh, March 2020, there was, uh, you know, Windows was integrated into the Envoy CI build pipeline and building 
Envoy.exe, which was a, a major milestone. Since then, there were a number of performance improvements and uh, you know, uh, additional testing that we enabled uh, that gave us the, the, basically the confidence needed to sign off on uh, an alpha release for Envoy on Windows. So now that we're here, we have an alpha for Windows. What does that actually mean? So that means that Envoy is supported on, uh, is natively supported on, on Windows. So it's not targeting you know, some Windows subsystem for Linux or something similar like that. It is running on Windows itself. Uh, there are no uh, Envoy executables on Windows yet, however. We're, we're working on that. So. Um, Currently, the expectation is that users need to build the project from master. Uh, the alpha also means that we're still soliciting feedback from our users. You know, we expect that users will run into build or usage issues, and you know, we, we will be triaging GitHub frequently and looking at you know, what are the, the top pain points that are being reported by our users. Um, that being said, uh, even though we are triaging issues, there's no formal um, agreement that this is uh, going to be supported uh, for production usage, basically, in its current state of alpha. So how do you get started? So there are a few requirements. Uh, the minimum uh, Windows version needs to be uh, version 2019 or above. Uh, you need to set up a build environment using Bazel, and you need to have some familiarity with basically command shell or the, the shell that you're using to build Envoy. Um, also of note is that there are some this, there are some features and extensions that are disabled since we're still in alpha. Um, you know we expect to enable uh, the relevant ones before a beta or a GA release. Um, you know for example, uh, signal handling or process lifecycle control is something that we will be looking at as well as uh, looking at the tracing extensions. However, there might be some features that we find uh, will need to be disabled. Uh, permanently, such as hot restart. So we, we will be assessing those and trying to enable as many of these as possible as we're iterating through uh, beta and uh, eventually a, a GA release. So for more details, there is a few AKMS links here, and they basically contain our alpha announcement blog post, a sample tutorial, and an onboarding guide. So to get started, as I mentioned before, you need to build Envoy from the master branch. This is actually um, considered release quality at all times because there's a, a lot of testing that goes on before code gets into that branch. Um, to get started, there's a few build instructions. Basically, on the Envoy proxy site, we've added Windows instructions next to the Linux building instructions. Uh, and there's also a Docker image available as well if you want to build Envoy on that. So follow those URLs. Um, one last gotcha tip would be that you have to be perhaps careful with the shell when invoking uh, Bazel on Windows. Uh, we have specifically tested the MSYS2 bash, um, but there are, there are other shells like PowerShell and Command. There are, there are different ways to compile Envoy on Windows. And you know we're, we're looking um, for feedback from the community to see how they behave and if there are any quirks, although we, we, we do expect that all of them should work. So demo time, the exciting part. Uh, here's a diagram of our uh, demo of Envoy running in a sort of cloud-native uh, common deployment scenario that you might see in something like Kubernetes. Um, we have a front-end Envoy running in a Docker container um, set up with Docker Compose um, that is configured with a listener that's serving TLS and uh, two upstream clusters. Um, re that represent two, two different versions of an application. Uh, one of them is an app that serves an image of a dog. The other one is an app that serves an image of a cat. Um, and we've con configured this uh, scenario to have um, MTLS between the front end Envoy and the back end services. And all of the configuration of the listeners and clusters is set up to be uh, dynamically updatable. Um, with Envoy's um, ability to watch file events and uh, update configuration accordingly. 
Um, so this might be something that you could see in a, in a cloud, as I said, a cloud native deployment scenario. You have uh, a sidecar envoy sitting next to your application process, um, uh, proxying traffic and serving PLS and allowing you to um, encrypt all the uh, traffic in flight in your, in your network. Um, of course, you, could, you would not have this on a single host, but you'd run this across many hosts in a Kubernetes cluster across multiple worker nodes. Um, and uh, so let's dive into it. Let's see this actually working. All right, so for this demo, we have a Windows Server uh, 2019 instance in Google Cloud, and we have a VS Code uh, session connected to that over SSH. Um, so we're editing some files on that, uh, on that remote server. And here we have the uh, Docker Compose set up for our demo. Um, you can see the service configuration for the, the front Envoy proxy. We've got some ports that we're exposing to that Windows host, as well as some mounted, um, uh, by mounted directories that are going to be inside that service container. Similarly, we have a similar setup for the, the dog service and the cat service that will be our two upstream services. Um, to access the uh, uh, demo from our uh, local workstation, we've got some uh, forwarded ports set up in our VS Code SSH session. So uh, let's bring up the demo. We can do a Docker compose up, detach to get our services running. And just to check that they're running. Docker Compose PS. All right, everything's up and running and happy. And let's take a look at our uh, service. All right, we've got a picture of a dog. And then when we refresh, sometimes we get a picture of a cat. So we've got traffic routing between these two um, services. And we can also um, take a look at the admin endpoint for this front proxy envoy. Um, so we can take a look at the admin interface. This is what you would typically expect from Envoy when you're looking at the admin API. Um, we can look at the certs that we've configured um, on the um, this front Envoy proxy. Um, we can look at the status of the clusters, everything that you would typically expect from um, the Envoy admin interface, look at the stats. We can see that um, we've got a few requests completed for each of our upstream services. So everything looks good. This is what you would typically expect. Um, and nothing different on Windows from what you would see on your Envoy instance um, on Linux or other platforms. Um, so uh, let's show an example of Envoy's dynamic config updating working. Um, we can take a look at our uh, listener uh, filter configuration for our, uh, or sorry, our cluster configuration for our front envoy. And um, we can see here that we have a, a transport socket configured with a TLS context. Um, so it's the, this envoy is going to um, serve, uh, uh, present these, this cert. Um, upstream to any client side of context, and it's also going to do some uh, validation of the cert that the upstream uh, presents, similarly for the other cluster configuration. Um, this is so we can start to get MTLS between our uh, front envoy and our, um, our backend service. And similarly, on the um, upstream envoy configuration for the services, we have uh, so, uh, so the same thing, it's this time in the downstream TLS con context. On the listener, uh, we're presenting the certs and validating the, the CA of the search presented to um, the upstream envoy. Um, so just to show an example of the dynamic configuration and certs updating, um, what happens when we uh, update the uh, upstream envoy with an invalid cert? What happens? Um, are we actually doing any validation uh, of the certs that are being uh, presented here? So let's make a copy of this listener's file so that we can update it. So copy, we serve this Envoy config listeners to a temporary file. Mm 
and edit. And instead of this cert, we're going to pass in an invalid cert. And then do a move operation to get Envoy to notice this config update. All right, so that update should get picked up by Envoy. And when we go to query our services, eventually, all right, once the cache is cleared out, we get a uh, error, a TLS error um, from the uh, front Envoy saying that the certificate verification uh, failed. So uh, we can see that that half of the, the mutual TLS um, uh, handshake is, is working. Uh, we're not trusting this, the, the CA that would gen uh, the certificates were generated from. Um, so that's great. And let's update back to um, original state, do a fix our um, uh, configuration here so we we'll be able to get our dogs and cats back. And now let's um, demonstrate the other side of the MTLS uh, handshake and um, give the uh, uh, upstream envoy, um, make it do some more strict validation of the uh, cert that the uh, front proxy envoy is presenting. So here we'll match some subject alternate names, we'll match and have an exact match, and we'll match the name foo, which the cert that the um, uh, downstream envoy is presenting is is not does not have in it. So let's again do a move to, to get the config update and um, we'll be able to see a different error, um, a certificate unknown error coming from the upstream. So it does not able to verify that certificate. So um, MTLS, um, an important um, uh, thing in uh, securing identity and encryption um, and an important uh, feature that uh, Windows apps will be able to transparently, and Windows app deployments will be able to transparently be able to um, take advantage of if their Envoy um, sort of mesh is configured um, uh, with this to be able to um, verify identity of upstream and downstream services, um, secure um, traffic. So for this demo, we'll be showing uh, Envoy on a basic Windows VM. And uh, we'll be running Envoy as an edge or front proxy on the Windows Server 2019 machine and showing some basic Envoy concepts in action using two super simple uh, demo apps. So what I have here is my Windows Server machine. And I have two apps very creatively called App1 and App2 listening on port 8080 and 89. Just to show them, click Browse Website. This is the first app, it just says, hello from app one. And the other app is saying, hello from app two. So what I have here now is a VS Code window that's connected remotely to my Windows Server machine. And I have some very basic uh, yeah, an envoy.yaml configuration file you know, with some logs being saved and collected, and uh, dynamic resources defined for clusters and listeners. So let's take a look at the YAML that I have right now. For the cds.yaml, I have a very basic round-robin load balancing policy, and that's uh, balancing incoming traffic across uh, the two instances of my app, one listening uh, app 1 on 8080 and app 2 listening on port 8090. And for the listeners, I have a very basic HTTP listener, um, you know, starting Envoy on port 80 and uh, accepting and routing all the requests to the backend cluster. Very, very super simple uh, demonstration of Envoy on Windows Server. Let's show this. We'll be starting Envoy, applying the Envoy.yaml that I created. So we can see here in the logs being printed that we have added one cluster. 
our backend cluster, and we have added a listener called listener.http. So now we should be able to connect and see this load balancing policy in action. So let me refresh my window here. And we can see hello from app one. Refresh the window. We are showing the load balancing policy since we're load balancing between the two instances or of the application, app one and app two. So one thing that is missing here, however, is uh, basically that you know our connection is unencrypted. You know, we're using HDV 1.1, and this is something that Envoy can also help us out with very easily. Uh, so let's switch back to VS Code to update the configuration so we have proper encryption. So I'll be updating my listeners here. I'll be just copy and pasting them. So we have our new listener here. We call it HTTPS. Update the port value from 80 to 443. And I also have a cert that I generated earlier. And I'll be pointing Envoy to the cert that I generated, configured for the website, essentially. So let's paste that in. We can see transport sockets enabling TLS, pointing it to the certificate chain and private key. And we're also uh, enabling H2. So save this, update the configuration. ODS.yaml. So we can see in the logs that our update was accepted by Envoy and uh, yeah, it has added a new listener HTTPS. So going back our application, we should be able to go to HTTPS. So without any changes to our app, and thanks to Envoy's dynamic configuration update, we now have uh, you know, an encrypted connection using TLS 1.3. And we have also enabled H2 for our connection. So this is showing how easy it is to uh, you know, configure and add security and TLS to an existing website without having to do uh, any changes to the underlying apps, essentially, and do this in a dynamic and convenient way. So what's next for Envoy on Windows? Uh, we're planning on providing beta release binaries for Envoy on Windows in the 116 uh, release range. Uh, you can follow the GitHub milestone that's linked there. Um, some specific plan improvements that we have are to enable some of the features and extensions that are currently disabled, um, approve any user feedback, and fix any rough edges that we um, get there, uh, improve event loop performance, and uh, improve process lifecycle control, so some of the integration with the Windows Service Control Manager. Um, in, in addition, uh, we're planning on making a generally available release um, somewhere in the one, Envoy 117 release range. That should be in quarter one or quarter two of next year. Um, and farther in the future, um, some Windows features that are going to be available in the uh, release of uh, Windows Server in, that comes in the first half of 2021 will um, enable some new, new things on, with Envoy on Windows. So uh, routing uh, traffic, uh, egress traffic from your application through Envoy uh, for use in the service mesh, um, similar to how uh, service mesh implementations um, use IP tables on Linux. Um, that should be available in that release, as well as uh, improved uh, Windows SDKs with new socket APIs that support edge uh, triggering for file system events. So the Windows uh, developer community uh, really would like to lean on the community to help us get to a GA release. Um, so how can you contribute? Um, uh, as you start using Envoy on Windows, uh, you may run into some known issues. So uh, the area Windows tag on the GitHub issue tracker uh, for Envoy is a great place to start. Um, look at known issues, report new issues. And of course, PRs are always welcome for documentation improvements as well as um, fixes and feature um, improvements. 
Um, if you want to get some more one-to-one -one contact with the uh, current crop of contributors on Windows, uh, uh, reach out to the Envoy Windows dev channel on Envoy Slack workspace. Um, in addition, we have a weekly uh, community meeting specifically for Windows development where we coordinate uh, work and uh, uh, set the roadmap. So if you want to get involved um, there, uh, definitely come to that meeting. Um, so finally, uh, we'd like to uh, extend a huge shout out and special thank you to the contributors from Microsoft, VMware, and the Envoy maintainers that worked tirelessly to make Envoy on Windows a reality. Um, and with that, um, thank you all for attending our presentation. Uh, we hope it was informative. Um, and we'd like to open it up for questions. Hey, all, if anyone has any questions, uh, please ask us now. We have a few minutes potentially to uh, uh, answer any questions you guys have. All right, well, it looks like we started a few minutes late, so um, we've already passed 12.01 uh, now. So uh, please let us know any questions you have in the in the chat and you can reach us on, on Slack as well. We can uh, relinquish the space so that the next session can start running. Um, thank you, everyone.